The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off and he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last ones worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have bore, bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Where am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. So one of the realities of parables is there's always an element of surprise in the parable. So what is the surprise in today's parable? God is not fair. And that is an assault on our human sensitivities. We believe everything should be fair. We hate it when we're not treated fairly. We're always comparing what we receive in relation to others. And we think we, we've been cheated. We, 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 we cry out. It's not fair. One of the things that we learn from this parable and learn on our journey of faith is God is not fair. And we should rejoice in that. We should be grateful for that. You know, in this particular parable, let's face it, most of us, I mean, we, most of us live pretty privileged lives. And who do we relate to in this parable? We relate to the people who've been out there bearing the day's heat. We relate to the people who have been out there working all day. We, we do what we're supposed to do. We work hard. We're doing everything we're supposed to do. We don't relate to those people who are still around at five o'clock, do we? we? We consider those people the lazy people. Why aren't they working? Why aren't they doing what they're supposed to do? But Jesus wants us to see ourselves in those people who at the end of the day are finally hired and are given a full day's wage because that's how God treats all of us. God's abundant love and mercy is poured out on all of us, no matter what. And so we should be grateful because we receive that, but we should also rejoice when others receive the same. Uh, in, in our world that oftentimes is so caught up in, in fairness and everything being fair, God is not fair, but God is always just. And God is always especially reaching out to those who are not treated fairly and justly in the world. God has a special place for those who are oftentimes the outcasts, the forgotten, those without a voice. And we're called to do the same by bringing that love and mercy of God to others. And so let us rejoice in the abundant love and mercy of God that is always shared with us. And let us rejoice that others receive the same and, and not worry about what's fair, but always strive to live that justice that is revealed to us through God's love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.